screen. Yes. Perfect. Let me know when you think we should get started. Yep, now would be great. Oh yeah, okay. So everyone, uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us uh, this morning or in whatever time zone you might be tuning in from. My name is Professor Alberto de Salvatierra. I'm director of the Center for Civilization and I'm the incoming Associate Dean undergraduate. Uh, they'll be looking after the Bachelor of Design in City Innovation. So it, it's really my pleasure to welcome you all here and to have uh, more of a conversation, uh, both a presentation talking a little bit about the University of Calgary and SAPO, but also uh, sharing some of the perspectives from a student side around what you can expect uh, as a student as you join and begin your journey as part of SAPO. So first, I would like to start with a land acknowledgement. We would like to acknowledge the traditional territories of the people of Treaty 7 region in Southern Alberta, which includes the Blackfoot Confederacy, comprising the Sitsika, Pikani, and Kanai First Nations, as well as the Sutina First Nation, the Stodi Nakoda, including the Chiniki, Bearspaw, and Wesley First Nations. The city of Calgary is also home to the Metis uh, Nation of Alberta, Region 3. So just to quickly share our brief agenda with all of you, uh, we're, we're gonna start with some introductions. Then we'll talk a little bit about SAPL. Um, then we'll go into some program advising, uh, go over some common degree terms, what you can expect for your first year courses, what are the student resources that are available to you. Um, then we'll go into more of a conversational aspect of our agenda, which is about learning uh, on the student experience. Uh, what does what the studio look like? What does a typical student day look like? And then we'll have closing remarks and a question and answer session for those of you who, who might still have questions. So why don't we get started? So first, I'd like to do some introductions, and maybe rather than me introducing them, I could have uh, each of you, Sarah, and the student representatives, maybe chime in and just give a, a brief thirty-second uh, sort of introduction to you. Are. So Sarah, why don't you go first? Hi everyone, my name is Sarah. I'm the undergraduate program specialist. So if you're working a lot with me and you'll probably see a lot of information coming from me and a lot of emails from me. So I'm I'm your number one resource, I would say, when you come to BDCI. If you have any questions about your program, if you need any support, um, even if I'm not the person to help you with it, I can always direct you to that great person or department. So welcome. Perfect, thank you, Sarah. Super succinct. So now the student representatives, you guys will have uh, time towards the end of the presentation to talk a bit more at length, but why don't you just give a, a brief introduction to who you are. So Shreya Wilson, you're up first. Hello everyone, I'm Shreya Wilson. I'm in my final year in Masters of Architecture. And yep, that's it. If you wanna know anything about this um, curriculum, just reach out to me. Thank you. Thank you, Shreya. Sahil. Hi everyone, good morning. Uh, great to see you all. Uh, my name is Sahil, and I'm a first-year M-Plan student. Um, I'm from India, specifically from Mumbai. Um, so yeah, uh, looking forward to see you all. And in case of any questions, feel free to contact me. Thank you. Thank you, Sahil. Tom? Uh, hi, everyone. Good morning. My name is Tom Brown. I'm in my final year in the Master of Landscape Architecture program. And uh, yeah, very similar to everyone else. If you have any questions, anything that you'd like to know about the program, what is landscape architecture, please feel free to ask. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. And Connie. Uh, my name is Connie. I am currently in my second year of the ME DES program. It is a thesis-based program, um, but I also have completed my Master of Landscape Architecture in 2020. So if you have questions about either of the programs uh, as well, <laughs> let us know, um, let me know. I can definitely have a chat with you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Connie. So uh, before we begin, we thought we'd start with uh, what has become uh, my favorite little video about SAPL. We, we recently got this into production, <clears throat> and uh, I think it uh, provides a really quick summary of, of who we are. So I'm going to go ahead and play that. Welcome to a distinctly different design school experience. Community engaged, performance driven, entrepreneurial, impact-oriented, and future-focused. 
We are training leaders to become catalysts for positive local and global change so that you can learn how to develop solutions to help solve some of the world's great problems. Even me? Really? Yes, <laughs> definitely you. Through challenge-based learning, collaborations with industry, building and prototyping solutions, we are expanding the idea of what it means to be a designer. With bold thinking for the built environment, for sustainability, for equity, for health, for vibrancy, cities made for people and the good of the planet. It's not going to be easy, but you can make change happen. You can change the world. You can create the future of city building. Excellent. If, you've, if you'd like to see that again, I think it'll be available on Sapple's YouTube channel. I find it really catchy. Um, but let's keep going. So the School of Architecture, Planning and Landscape, as the disciplines would suggest, is primarily made up of uh, researchers, students, faculty, staff, all working in the areas of architecture, planning, and landscape architecture. Um, we also offer a minor in architectural studies um, and advanced <clears throat> postgraduate degrees um, in environmental design, so a master's of, of environmental design. We also offer a, a doctor of design, Adidas, or and PhDs. And this, this whole ecosystem presents a, a really kind of varied territory to explore and examine these questions of the built environment, of city making, of design, and this kind of transdisciplinary kind of environment that we foster, I think is, is really productive in tackling some of these questions. And now that we're expanding to our first class ever, the Bachelor of Design and City Innovation, we're, we're gonna continue to build on that legacy and continue to add even more people who are sort of interested in these diverse perspectives and bring them together to sort of collaborate and sort of effectuate some of these uh, ideas into practice. Some of our facilities that we have, we're currently located in two different places. We have the Northwest Campus. This is the primary uh, main university campus uh, up in the Northwest uh, part or Northwest from the downtown. Um, there we have digital simulations lab. We have a stand, uh, gallery sponsored by Stantec which is the national leading um, architecture and design firm. Uh, we also have a student lounge and a student kitchen, various uh, studios, classrooms. Uh, the Northwest campus will be the primary home of the BDCA students in the fall of 20, uh, 2033. Additionally, we have a downtown campus that's really kind of our collaborative hub in downtown Calgary, and that's the city building design lab. Uh, there we have a public gallery, uh, robotics or fab lab, 3D printer studios, an event hall, and, and digital fabrication. So uh, here we have another quick video uh, sort of explaining the, the rationale for the City Building Design Lab and how it itself is this kind of locus of activity to activate additional industry partnerships, work with the municipality, um, and sort of engaging with the city right there on the ground uh, in the middle of downtown Calgary. The City Building Design Lab is a place for youthful optimism. We needed somebody to come in and really activate it. So more than just a coffee shop, more than an office space, we wanted to have it be active. CMLC's investment over the next five years is intended to create a comprehensive village. It's about bringing in people. So the more diverse uses, the more diverse thinking that we have in the area, the more successful we all can be. When you first walk into the City Building Design Lab, there is a large gallery space that's going to be open to the public and it's going to be filled with a rotating series of exhibits. Some of it will be student work, some of it will be some of our research work. We also have a studio, a design studio, where 60 of our students are working every day uh, on projects related to the city. Come down and try it. You know, there's, there's a wide range of things. We're, we've got a big tent. Uh, we're in a, a time of flux right now in the city, and I think what better pairing to have students who are really at the forefront of thinking about those issues and come at it from a design thinking perspective. We also uh, invite you to visit either of our facilities. 
the professional uh, faculties building in the main campus or the city building design lab. Uh, if any of you might be interested in making a visit, uh, you can connect with any of us in the BDCI team and we can direct you to maybe the best times or days uh, to make a visit. We also have public lectures and we actually have one coming up on April 5th or 6th, April 5th on Wednesday. Um, so can the city opportunities to, to join. Uh, here we just have a few more pictures of our downtown campus. Uh, it sort of becomes a laboratory for experimentation. Here we have the image of a canopy that was built by Professor Mauricio Soto and a few of his students. Uh, but inside we have the gallery, which uh, regularly features various exhibitions, uh, installations, uh, multimedia work in the event hall. We often have lectures, panels, uh, evening events to kind of engage in conversation with industry and the local sort of uh, design community. We, this is also a place where we uh, have reviews, final reviews, again, to kind of showcase all the work that we've been doing over the uh, each semester. Uh, and next fall, and uh, so next year, next, next uh, academic year, the CBD lab will be hosting uh, all of the architecture students, the graduate architecture students, but these uh, facilities, primarily the event hall and the gallery, will still be open to the rest of the school for the various activities that will be taking place. Um, this is the studio that uh, was temporarily converted into a sort of expansion of, of the exhibition uh, hall. So uh, now coming down to what you're tuning in for, the Bachelor of Design in City Innovation. Um, congratulations, right? Uh, this is a really, really kind of significant moment, and we're very excited to have all of you joining us. This program offers a design-based framework for thinking about the world, thinking about society, civilization, and its challenges, and how to create inclusive and sustainable city-focused solutions, which in the age of climate change and the various sort of dislocations um, happening worldwide, this sort of thinking is going to be really, really critical in order to uh, tackle, productively tackle some of the challenges that we're facing. So what you can expect from the BDCI is a hands-on studio-based learning um, environment, tackling real-world projects. Uh, classes will be in advanced digital design tools, data science, entrepreneurship, and sustainability. And we really are trying to foster this program to be a spark for innovation, for the betterment of our communities and our society at large. Uh, the BDCI requires the completion of 120 units and normally takes four years of full-time study. And if you have any questions as we go through the presentations, you can put them in the chat uh, and then we can sort of address them at the end or, or uh, once we have the students um, putting in. So, uh, Sarah, would you like to jump in and sort of share some of the common degree terms? For sure. Uh, so we'll look at the bachelor's degree first. So that is the typical base credential program that you go into when you enter into UC when you're pursuing the undergraduate level of studies. So similar to the BDCI, um, bachelor's degrees are typically 120 units. And so that usually takes around four years of full time study. And in U of C, we use units to describe the courses. So most courses are typically three units. Um, and so in a general semester, a full-time course load, a max full-time course load is five courses or 15 units. Uh, and then when we look at uh, the concentration, that's a focus within a degree or a major. And so that requires usually a minimum of 18 units. Now, specifically in BDCI, we have the architecture or landscape architecture concentrations. So we can you can learn more about that as you progress in your degree. Aside from the concentration, we have the minor. So the minor is typically a minimum of 30 units, and it's a secondary area of specialization within the bachelor's degree. And finally, with the embedded certificate, similarly to the minor, it's a secondary of specialization and it requires around 12 to 24 units. And when we look at the concentration, the minor and the embedded certificate, these components are usually completed in tandem with your degree requirements. And next slide, please. 
So this is the first year courses that we have available as you come into fall 2023 and winter 2024. Um, these are the recommended courses that uh, we want you to take so that you can progress in your degree and finish within four years. That being said, um, if you have anything that you wanna change within it or you wanna take less, definitely connect with me and can talk more about how you want to um, craft your degree progression based on the courses that you need to take. One tip as you go into registration is that you need to register for both your fall and winter semesters at the same time. Uh, so you wanna make sure that you uh, register for winter because those classes can fill up at the same time. So you don't wanna wait until later on. Now, you don't need to remember this order. Uh, if you have any questions about it, and I will be providing more resources later on in the next few slides, but if you have questions, you can contact me at bdci at sapl.ucalgary.ca. Just look at the next slide, please. Awesome. So here are some student resources. So if you, feel free to just nab them right now with uh, your phone. But the first one is the BDCI degree planning page. And this is where it houses all the different resources that you will see related to course planning. So we have information on what courses that we recommend that you take in your four years in BDCI uh, for each of the pathways related to BDCI. And then on the right, you're going to see a link to the BDCI program advising. So this is where you can connect with me if you have any questions. And we also have a lot of resources there relating to the different aspects of your student life at U of C. Next slide, please. All right. And for this one, uh, we have additional student support services. So this is beyond just what Sapple can offer. There's a lot of things that UFC has prepared for your adventure here. And so this link will take you to all the different student support services available on our campus. And then stay tuned to your emails because we will be sending out more information about Ready for September. So this will be a session where we talk more about your transition to UFC, the different resources that you can access, and what you need to do to prepare for your September start. Next slide, please. So now we want to get a little bit into studio learning and what this environment entails. So in a studio learning environment, which is a, often an open and collaborative environment, sort of uh, most akin to a workshop or an atelier, Students learn to develop viable design solutions mentored by faculty and industry professionals. So students generate design solutions to identify real world challenges, guiding and reviewing their work through formal and informal critiques. So these look like informal peer to peer learning, uh, facilitated project work and collaboration with community based clients and partner organizations. So a hallmark of the Apple experience is not only kind of this uh, lecture format where a faculty member is speaking at you. It's more of a co-experiential, uh, co-making experience where you sort of working together on a project. Uh, industry partners are coming in, providing feedback, having conversations, and building design in this way. And now we, we've brought here uh, four really extraordinary students from the graduate program to speak a little bit about uh, their experience. So Shreya, you're gonna start us off and um, maybe the questions that you can tackle in perhaps three to five minutes each uh, would be, what does a typical day look like? Um, how is studio-based learning different than lecture style learning? And what advice would you give BDCI students as they begin their academic journey? Okay, so what does a typical day look like? So the way the curriculum is programmed, there is studio that is assigned two to six every single day, but we don't really meet our professors every day. It's more like you choose between Thursday, Friday, or Monday, Wednesday, and the remaining days are mostly like you just go in and work on your projects and the way the studio is designed is like as our brother was mentioning about collaboration so you're like working with your classmates whether it's um, group works or individual you're just sitting together learning together and like experimenting which is like um, 
whether it's like digitally or like physical model making and the way the studio is designed is like we have tools and the workshop is located nearby so that allows for that um to like help you with your um course or your like project that you're doing so that is what like a typical day in architecture looks like where you're just either researching you're doing your drawings or you're like making models together and how is studio-based learning different so I think in a way I did answer that question as well because um, it's not like a typical day where you just like go to a class listen to a lecture and then just like go back home and just study your notes it's more learning together and collaborating with your classmates maybe they have like different skill sets that you learn from them or like you all figure out or do problem solving together so that is um, more how like a studio-based learning environment works and what advice would I give one thing is that studio culture is really important because <laughs> I started off with like zoom classes and the first year was really difficult just like being on zoom troubleshooting on your own you have no idea like when you're learning a new software but the minute you're like sitting in studio with your classmates um I'm sure like there are others who pick up things way quicker or like there's like an easier way of doing it so it's like being in the studio is so important because you can just like slide your chair around ask questions rather than just like sitting on a screen and just trying to like troubleshoot things on your own so I'd say like yeah one thing which is really important is like be in studio get to know your classmates because they're gonna help you through the whole course yeah that's all Perfect. Thank you, Shreya. And the picture on the screen is uh, Shreya. So you also get co cool pictures <laughs> as part of your software experience. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, thank you, Shreya. So Sahil, you're up next. Uh, yes. Um, so I am in my uh, first year Master's of Planning student, like I mentioned before. Um, I have a background in architecture. So what makes made me come to UFC, I wanted to highlight that, like, because there are a lot of other schools that offers you these kind of programs. But one of the things is like, yes, it is design based curriculum, uh, and studio based curriculum, which would help you, um, you know, develop your creative outlook towards the problems uh, that the city or as a community we are facing. Um, it is interdisciplinary. So a lot of times, uh, you see what architecture people from architecture do, what you see what people from landscape architecture do. So you get ideas for even your own project. So it's like, you know, kind of cross pollination between different fields that can happen Apple, via exhibitions that are put up in Stentech. Um, and um, besides, uh, yes, day in a life of a student, it's more similar in planning also, like as in, uh, like Shreya mentioned, but I also wanted to highlight there are a lot of other extracurricular things uh, that that goes on in SAPL. Like, for example, there is a student lounge. It's just a way to, you know, kind of de-stressing yourself from the studio environment. Or if it's too hectic times, then you just de-stress yourself. Then you have design matters lecture, which helps you kind of um, connect with the industry professionals. So I think we all, as a student, we should make most out of that. Um, and there are mentorship programs also, uh, which helps you connect with the industry professionals and, you know, the per mentor can guide students um, on how you, uh, like, you can take your professional journey ahead. Um, the whole, uh, like, what I would recommend, like, in, in a way, I advise is like, yes, learning from peers is one of the major thing uh, in the studio uh, environment. And in the end, the, so design is very um, like, it's not right or wrong. Um, and nothing is right and wrong in, you know, kind of in the studio environment. But in the end, do one should do projects and feel uh, satisfied with what you achieve to the level that you really want to go to. Um, so yeah, I think it is very important in the studio environment to learn, to be, um, like open to ideas, uh, accept uh, good criticism, think on it, and then work on it to be proud of the work that we do. Um, 
uh, yeah, and there would be a lo lot of times you would face creative block. So it's just about talking to people, uh, talking to your friends, build connections. And the, yes, like Shreya mentioned, the peers that you are with would definitely help you sail through the program. Uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. Let me know if you have any other questions. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Sahil. There we go. Tom. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Tom Brown. And uh, yeah, I'm in my final year in the Master of Landscape Architecture right now. Um, just to not kind of go over what everyone else has gone over, because I feel like Shreya did a very good job explaining what a typical uh, day looks like for a design student. Um, yeah, just kind of talking about the the school experience overall and the, the combination of studio courses and uh, regular courses, which I feel like is different than a lot of other um, sort of streams of education and that the, the studio style learning uh, is really nice because you kind of get these longer extended um, periods of interaction with both your peers and with your instructors where you get really informative lectures, uh, lots of really great readings, um, but you also get a uh, sort of longer period um, uh, critiques, I guess would be the word for it. And so that's, uh, for my educational background, I came from a master, or a, pardon me, a bachelor of fine arts. And so that was my whole undergrad experience was uh, critiques. And I feel like that's something that if you don't have that experience is maybe, um, can maybe be quite different because you're used to getting feedback maybe in a certain way, getting graded and getting something back. But a critique is much more, um, you know, it's a much more vulnerable experience and it's something that uh, it can take a little while to get used to. But I would uh, sort of say that uh, how studio-based learning is different than lecture style learning comes through the critique and that you can really get a lot out of these uh, very constructive conversations where, you know, sometimes you're a uh, professor can be very um, like open with telling you right in the in the moment, so like here's what you're doing well, here's not uh, maybe what you need to work on, and having these really productive conversations that are really great back and forth, and that is kind of the foundation of um, design learning, and that also comes through conversations with your peers, uh, very similar to Shreya as well. My first year was on Zoom as well, and so it was very much a black box, and critiques were happening through Zoom, and then you were kind of left to yourself and. As soon as we were able to be in the room with each other, which uh, you guys will be able to be, it was so amazing to have these conversations with people. And, um, you know, in terms of advice that I would give to really start to learn who you are. So, you know, figuring out um, what your skills are and what voice you bring. Uh, because in landscape architecture, it's so varied and there are so many different uh, streams and possibilities and different ways of thinking about things, looking at things, different ways of designing. And it really comes to figuring out who you are, what your skills are, um, and, and really coming to understand that. So I would say figure out who you are um, through this experience, really embrace it and start to learn your skills, what makes you unique and what uh, makes your viewpoint on the world different than everybody else's, because that will be eventually um, what allows you to kind of become uh, a fully fledged professional who has a um, unique set of skills, a unique viewpoint, and an ability to apply those to solving problems. Fantastic. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you so much, Tom. Connie. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> a great photo. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, so, I do have a bit of a different experience than the other students because I am taking a thesis based program. Um, and so what this is, it is um, a much more self learning and self guided uh, approach, uh, because you are researching a topic and so you most of the time you're actually spending doing your own research, writing about your own research and also uh, potentially making a design for your research as well. Um, so basically for the first year you will be in classes part of the time. So you'd only have about one or two classes a semester. Um, and then the second year of the Master, Envir Master of Environmental Design, you will basically be working on your thesis with your supervisor. Um, and so 
I guess that's where the difference is, is that you may be on your own a little bit more often. Um, and this program is more geared towards those who have completed a professional degree in architecture, planning, or landscape architecture. So it is really great to have the working knowledge of these design degrees ahead of time um, so that you can focus on something that you really truly enjoy researching. Um, how is studio-based learning different? Um, I guess in this instance, uh, I can still speak to that a little bit. Um, because of my previous degree in landscape architecture as well. Um, there's, everybody else has sort of mentioned really good points already, um, but what I sort of really enjoyed about studio-based learning is the interaction with people. Um, and so I'm gonna tie this into the advice as well, is that really get to know the people around you, both students, faculty, and um, the professors as well, because these people are the ones that will help to guide you through your program and it, and as well as after when you leave the program. Um, so really get to know them. They will have phenomenal advice for you. And if you ever just have questions, feel free to, to ask them. Um, I found that the most helpful thing that I could have done was just say, hey, I need some advice on, uh, let's say, uh, looking for work. I need some advice on that. And I spoke to several different professors, students, and they all would give me numerous, numerous advice. Um, so always helpful to make those connections with everyone else. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Connie, Shreya, Sahil, Tom, Connie. Thank you for sharing your experiences. And uh, for those of you tuning in, um, you'll have an opportunity to ask questions of everybody at the end. Um, so if you have something in mind, you can just pop it in the chat and we can sort of come back to it in just, just a few minutes. And, you know, of course, these perspectives are from graduate students, right? Master students. Obviously, the BDCI is an undergraduate program, so there will be some, some differences. Um, but I think the overall, the SAPL experience, the studio uh, environment, a typical day, these, uh, despite whether it's graduate or undergraduate, there will be a lot of similarities. Um, so I think th those are kind of the, the important sort of points to focus on. And also giving you a, a, a little bit of an introduction as to what you might expect uh, after BDCI, right? Obviously you have the choice to go out and join the workforce, or you can also choose to extend your education by pursuing um, a master's degree. So whether that would be in architecture, planning, or landscape architecture, or after that, if you're <laughs> really, really into learning, then, you know, staying even longer for a Master of Environmental Design, which is a, this post-professional degree, as Connie mentioned, that really uh, prepares you to uh, not only join a firm, but maybe do so with a, with a specialization that might make you an even more attractive employee. Um, so, oh. <laughs> So now I'm supposed to act surprised that this is sort of interrupting our uh, presentation. This, as you will come to learn, the University of Calgary has a thing about dinosaurs, uh, Alberta being a place where lots of uh, dinosaur fossils have been found. And uh, we have to play this video as part of the Rex challenge. So I think there will be some sort of prize here at the end is sponsored by the university. So I'm just gonna go ahead and play Make sure you have your cell phones out because I think there's there's some component here. So let's let's get that on the way. I'm Rex, the U Calgary mascot and number one Dinos fan. This incoming class is looking dynamite. <laughs> Cheering for dinos is my thing. Without you guys, I'd be a Tyrannosaurus wreck. <laughs> Jurassic times call for Jurassic measures. So I've got a roar some challenge just for you. Keep an eye on your inbox. I'll post details shortly. This challenge will be online, not in the field, so you won't have to worry about getting dinosaur.
Complete my challenge and you'll enter to win the U at U Calgary Rexus Challenge Award, valued between 1000 and 2500 Canadian dollars. Be sure to watch your email for more instructions after the event. Go Dinos! I I do apologize retroactively for the uh, visuals and uh, really animated excitement of, of this video. Uh, part of the university, but plus side is that you enter, you're, you'll be entered to win um, 1,000 uh, scholarship for 1,000 to uh, $2,500. So for those of you participating, you can scan this QR code to confirm your participation at the 2023 U at Calgary events, and you'll be entered to uh, win. And is that correct, Sarah? Yeah, so I would definitely say like, because you're here, scan the QR code, join in, because who doesn't want money to go towards their tuition? So this is one of the benefits of joining U at U Calgary, aside from getting earlier enrollment. So yeah, join in. Fantastic. Thank you, Sarah. So uh, stay connected, right? Congratulations once again. You're now part of the very first class, the inaugural class of the Bachelor of Design and City Innovation. You're going to be joining a community of students who are changing the world, uh, helping it make it better, uh, healthier, more vibrant, sustainable, and equitable place. So we are here to help you along the way, uh, please email, call, or drop by if you have questions or need support. And again, uh, the best email to reach us at with BDCI questions would be bdci at sapl.ucalgary.ca. Uh, we're located in the Professional Faculties Building, uh, PF uh, 2182. And I think now we're going to move into our, oh, our question and answer session. So I'm going to stop sharing. And um, now for the for the students who who have tuned in, uh, if you'd like to ask any questions uh, from either Sarah or myself or any of of the students um, whose perspectives we feature here today, please feel free to chime in. And I'm gonna look at the the chat. Is there anything else? Oh, so in the chat, there's a bunch of uh, really great uh, links. Um, thank you, Alexa, for posting those. So Angel Mia Tiffany Vire asks, may I ask the first few students, are all our classes going to be in the main campus or a few of our classes are going to be in the downtown campus? Excellent question, um, Angel Mia Tiffany Vire. The, all the first year st student courses will be located in the main campus. Um, the, there will be activities and events and exhibitions and lectures that will be happening in downtown. Uh, campus, uh, but all the courses will be taking place in the main campus. Uh, hi, sorry, I have a question that was sent to me here um, about will the uh, BDCI students have access to workshop uh, to make these types of models that the students were just kind of talking about? Excellent question, Alexa. Uh, thank you for whoever. Uh, uh, ask that. So that's that's a that's a good question. The we will be having so we have a number of different uh, laboratories and production facilities. We have the main wood shop and metal shop in the main campus. We have kind of a digital fabrication and robotics lab in the city building design lab. For the BDCI students, um, we will be having a dedicated kind of fab lab space. Uh, a DG fab space that will be outfitted with uh, 3D printers and uh, foam cutters and uh, other types of more safe uh, making tools. Uh, access to the wood shop and the metal shop will be reserved for uh, upperclassmen students, which there, there aren't any yet, and graduate students. So at least for the first year, um, uh, BDCI students won't have access to the wood shop or the metal shop because those require more significant training. Um, but there will be production facilities that BDCI students will have access to. And those will be located uh, strictly within 
uh, the studio space is being kind of dedicated just to the BUCI uh, program. Okay, so uh, McKenna is asking, on the U Calgary website, they discussed the summer series events. Is this the same as the ready for September sessions that you were discussing earlier? Also, will these be taking place in July or August? Um, Sarah or Alexa, might you have some insight into that? I'll need some more support on the summer series events themselves, but those are separate from the Ready for September session. So specifically uh, in the link where I provided the program advising portion, when you go to that link, it shows all the different things that I will be supporting you throughout from now until you start and beyond. But the I will be doing group advising over the summer. So if you have any questions about your enrollment or about your program, I will be uh, able to be reached through those group advising sessions. I'm also able to be booked through Elevate for appointments. And then the Ready for September session is kind of like the last hurrah before you jump into September and start your classes. So that will be one virtual session where we go over multiple things. But the summer series events, I believe, are separate and are generally sample events that they're hosting. So I'm wondering if um, Alexa or uh, anyone else can jump in more about that. Yeah, no, I would be interested to kind of learn about um, where you you read that um, because I'm not familiar with the, the exact terminology of the summer uh, series events. However, um, if you go to our future students page for SAPL, um, we will be having some interactive, fun, in-person things happening this summer that you will be more than welcome uh, to join. Uh, and so then you can even come and see our facilities. You can get a tour of, of the main campus or the downtown, uh, like Alberto said. Um, and so keep an eye on that. I'll pop that link into the chat. And if you want to follow up and let us know where you you uh, found that summer series let us you know tell us that too um, but hopefully you'll be able to join us uh, for the ready for September as well and um, you don't have to wait until the summer to join us for events uh, like I mentioned we have a lecture coming up on Wednesday at the city building design lab so that's a great place to meet students faculty and design community of the city uh, we also have a YES show, which is a, a year-end show for all the students that's happening at the end of April. And that's sort of how, you know, we have food and um, sort, of, sort of like a large party. Uh, we have a AIC conference that will also have maybe a public component and then other kind of spread out activities across the, the summer. So uh, Gavin um, is asking, good morning. I want to ask about transfer credits. I have done two my two year diploma of architectural technology in Nate. I just want to know how will my credits transfer or how does that work? Uh, Sarah, I'll let you tackle this one. Yeah. So as an incoming transfer student, what happens is the admissions team will first assess all your credits and then they will let you know um, how many credits you're able to use and put towards a degree at U of C. So that will come culminate to a transfer credit report that you'll see on your student center once you come in. And then from the BDCI side, in terms of transfer credits, there's a maximum of 39 units that you can transfer over to the degree itself. And within those 39 units, um, none of that can be applied to or used in lieu of our SAPL courses. So specifically in BDCI, we have a lot of the design courses as well as um, sustainability. And so those courses cannot be um, Trans, they're not transferable. So whatever you take from Nate will not cover those courses. You will need to take them at U of C. That being said, the courses that you've transferred over, most of them can be used towards your electives. So I would say in your situation, the best thing to do is once you see the transfer credit report to book an appointment with me, and then we can look at what transfer credits you have, and then the route that you want to take in BDCI, and then we can see where some or all of those transfer credits would work towards that degree program. Perfect. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so next question, I also want to ask what type of projects or materials that we will learn in our first year? Do we get used to Revit? Do we get to uh, build designs or of buildings of our own with many different materials? So I think across the length of the four year programs, uh, four year, um, four years of the BDCI courses, assignments, electives and seminars, we'll be dealing with a variety of materials, with a variety of project types. 
uh, it won't necessarily all be about designing buildings, but it could also be about designing landscapes, it could be about designing cities, uh, designing at various scales. Uh, and for the software, Revit is going to be a component, but also a rhinoceros, also informally known as Rhino, uh, 3DX Max, or Maya, or Blender, uh, Grasshopper, right? ArcGIS. So there's going to be a variety of different softwares. And as the program progresses and more and more complex tools and softwares are introduced, that's going to increase uh, the level of proficiency of the students and the level of complexity that they can tackle in their designs. Other questions? Any questions for uh, the students on, on a student side? Hi, Alberto. While we're waiting for another question to come in, um, also, I just wanted to ask Sarah, uh, can you uh, kind of maybe describe the um, newsletters that the students, the incoming students will be receiving through the summer, please? Sure. So definitely keep your eyes open for your inbox. Um, and we will be sending around monthly newsletters about things that you want to pay attention to as you're getting ready for BBCI. So things like setting up your um, your UCID, setting up your email with us. Um, if you're thinking of living on campus, making sure that you're looking into residence. So some of the resources that you want to take advantage of in advance, um, you definitely don't want to look into those a month before you come to UFC. Those are things to kind of make sure to guide you through over the summer um, to get ready for your experience at UFC. So included in that would be resources in terms of registration. How do you get support for that first bit of registering? Um, for example, we have the new student registration assistance which helps with all the incoming students. So we're going to plop a lot of those uh, details in these newsletters. So definitely take a read through. And of course, I'm always reachable through bdci at sapple.ucalgary.ca. And there's multiple ways to connect with me and also your peers, as I will be hosting group advising sessions over the summer. So definitely pay attention to those emails. And whenever we have a chance and there's something coming up that will be that we want you to attend or at least join us for fun, we'll try to include all those events in our newsletters as well. So just keep an eye out. Um, and it's also a good place to start conversations. If you read something and you're like, I don't know what you mean, Sarah, like, what is this thing that you're talking about? You can always reach out at bdci at sapple.ucalgary.ca. So lots of things to look at and perhaps a lot of things to ask about. Uh, it's your first experience here at UFC. We definitely want to support you through it. So ask away all the questions that you have as you go through the summer. I will throw in an extra question here because I do actually see it from our incoming students through email, and this is directed to all our, our uh, student volunteers here. And so they are just asking in general, um, in terms of the studio experience, like, is there anything that they need to do in advance to prepare for it? Do they need to bring anything? Um, do they just show up on the day of? So that like, there's some anxiety that I sense from some of the emails. The students are like, oh, I see that studio is such a big component at Sapple. What does that mean for me? And do I need to prepare or do I need to, you know, take some drawing lessons over the summer? Like, what is that? What am I supposed to do? Um, I feel like, don't worry, first of all, would be um, something to say, and that you're not going to get thrown in to the deep end right away, probably. And even if you do, it's going to be totally <laughs> fine. Um, you know, the experience with studio, I think no matter what, it's going to be different than anything that you've done before, because that's just what studio is. You're going to learn a lot. Um, if you wanted to do anything to prepare over the, the summer, you know, just um, think about what interests you think about what skills you'd like to learn maybe get ready to ask those questions um and start uh practicing with some of the software you know start practicing a little bit in photoshop start practicing a little bit in illustrator um get to just get your feet wet a little bit but i would say first and foremost don't worry you're going to be totally fine i think i can add to that a little bit as well 
for the most part, the first day of studio is a lot of introductory items. Um, you'll get to know the professor, you'll get to put, you'll get placed into your groups. Um, most of the projects are group based because these uh, classes can get uh, relatively big, uh, depending on the course, but and as well as for materials, uh, most of that will be introduced to you in the studio, sometimes depending on the project that you're doing, uh, it may be introduced by date, rather than all at once at the beginning of the class. Uh, as well, I think one of the biggest things that maybe you could probably think about bringing at least for like the first couple of weeks is to prepare a computer that you can have. It's not a requirement to have a computer, but it is very beneficial to have a laptop, something that you can bring mobile, especially if you are collaborating with other students, you want to be able to just grab it and go wherever you need to be, turn it around. Um, there are computers at the school, but again, like if you are on the go, you really want to be able to bring your uh, computers and software and projects with you. I will also suggest getting an external hard drive. Really great ones are the SSD external hard drives. They are a little more expensive, but it is a little more secure than just a regular hard drive. These are phenomenal at storing all of your projects um, and always back up your work. So having these external hard drives would be super helpful for that. And maybe just to add a little bit to, to Connie's point around the computers, uh, please refer to our computer specifications and suggestions on the sample website. Uh, if you go to Best Buy or another store and ask them, hey, I need a computer, can you help me out? Most likely they won't be able to know and they won't be able to productively inform you as to the needs, the hardware needs of your computer. Uh, because in their mind, you know, most students just needed to write essays and put, put together PowerPoint presentations. Um, whereas in the design disciplines, we're using a lot of software that whose closest analog is video games. So that requires uh, a lot of uh, rendering and high frame rates and really intensive uh, processes. So I would recommend, uh, in addition to a graphics card, the for for the RAM to be at least 32 megabyte gigabytes. Because uh, if you have an eight or 16 gigabyte um, RAM, it, you you will run into some issues running some of the softwares like Rhino, uh, which which really requires a lot of processing power. So just keep that in mind. And if you have any other additional specific questions around the, the computer, uh, you can check out our website. So uh, Gavin is asking a question. What are the requirements to get into the architecture concentration? Will it be able to help get into the MARC as well? Uh, Sarah, do you want to tackle the first part of that question? Or the, yeah, or for sure. So in terms of the BDCI, everyone will come in starting with the general BDCI program. And then in your second or third year, you can apply for the concentration. So the concentration is also competitive because there's limited spots in each of the different programs. And so the links I've just dropped in there, the first one will talk a bit about more the change of program process, what you need to do to apply for a change of program. And then the second one is specifically the eligibility requirements to get into the concentration. So there's a GPA and course requirements. And so earlier on, we had shared the link to the BDCI degree planning page. When you go onto that page, there are guides for specifically the concentration routes. So for example, architecture, or landscape architecture, it shows you what we recommend that you take in your first and second year and what you have to do in your second year to apply for the change of program so that you can begin your concentration in your third year. So again, um, meeting those admission requirements isn't guaranteed admission to the concentrations. And so I always tell students like, do your best, earn the, the highest grades that you can so that you can be competitive for the concentrations, but also be well informed in what you need to take in order that, to be eligible for applying for that. Um, so, and then um, I'll, I'll let Alberto talk more about the MRC, but I will say that students who are taking the BDCI with the architecture concentration uh, or the BDCI with the landscape architecture concentration, if you complete that degree successfully, allows you to waive the foundational year in the relevant Masters of Architecture or the Masters of Landscape Architecture when you go into it at U of C. So that, that is absolutely right. The... 
in order to get into the MARC program, that's some that's a separate program that you will have to apply in your final year of the BDCI if that is something that you want to continue on after you graduate from the BDCI. So of course, th there will be applicants who might be coming from other undergrad uh, programs across the country or internationally. Uh, there might be uh, students who maybe don't have a design background, but maybe are coming from biology or engineering or literature. Um, so having the BDCI program as your kind of background will probably give you an advantage in terms of having literacy around all the software and skills that are being taught, and you will have a, a really substantial portfolio of work, which is a requirement for admission into the MRC. You will have to submit a portfolio of design work that sort of shows your skills um, in, in architecture, in planning, in, in landscape architecture. So it will absolutely uh, help you get into the MRC. Uh, the next question, are all classes going to be Monday to Friday? How long are each class uh, going to be? And may I ask for advice for the best computer to use? So, uh, Sarah, do you want to tackle maybe the first two around the class and the class schedule? Yeah. Uh, so classes will be Monday to Friday um, if you're taking the full course load. So when you actually register, you're going to be able to use something called the virtual schedule builder, which will allow you to plot the classes um, that you need to take. And then it'll show you visually what your week will look like in terms of timing. So classes um, can happen uh, twice or three times a week, and then they range from an hour to two hours. And so what I recommend is that on the BDCI degree planning page, so the most recent link that's on our chat right now, it takes you to all the guides, but on the bottom, there's also video resources. And on those video resources, uh, we actually go through the what, when, and how of registration, as well as all the different terminology associated with registration and tips and resources. When you're watching those videos, you're going to get more of a lowdown of what that involves, where you can look at the timing, where you can look at how everything fits together. So I say definitely look at that page first, just because we have limited time today, can't go through everything, but go through that. And then if you have questions, just find me at bdci at sapl.ucalgary.ca or join one of our group advising sessions. Those are more of a casual um, drop-in basis where we can talk about anything that comes up and then you might learn from what your peers might also ask during these group advising sessions. Pass it to you, Alberto. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. So, and then the best computer to use. So I see Connie already put in the chat uh, that gaming laptops are a great place to start as they already are geared towards heavy processing and graphics. Uh, Connie is recommending going with Windows instead of Mac as some of the software is more suitable for Windows. Uh, that is correct. Um, if you're running Mac OS in a computer, it does make it a bit more difficult to get all the proper software as there aren't, not all of them have Mac versions. Um, however, the Mac computer in terms of hardware is pretty good. I have an, an actual Mac, uh, MacBook Pro, uh, but I removed the Mac OS and I put Windows <laughs> on it. So the, the inside software uh, is uh, Windows, but the actual hardware machine is a Mac. Uh, but in terms of sp more specifications, I, I really would want to refer all of you to, to, to could we, um, do we have the link identified? Yes. Oh, really? Uh, Recent Macs are not capable of running Windows. That's, that's yeah, since the M1 chip, they can't run Windows anymore. No way. Okay. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Okay, then I better not do anything to my current computer. Otherwise, I'm all right. I'll have to look for another one. Um, Sarah or Alexa, were you saying something about where we they might be able to find the information on the computers? Actually, Connie already shared it, which is awesome. Um, definitely take a look at that link there. Oh, uh, yes. You know, the, the requirements, and it will be updated as we um, look to see if there's anything that would be more beneficial for BDCI students. But I think starting from there would be great. And then if you have questions, definitely let us know. But we will be updating that if we have anything else that we think would be helpful for students. Fantastic. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Connie, for, for that uh, reference. And yeah, MacBooks, Dan. 
of course, you know, uh, hashtag capitalism, hashtag consumerism. Um, so it's now 10 a.m. So I want to be respectful of everyone's time. Unless there are any pressing final questions. Going once, going twice. All right, so, <laughs> um, so everyone, uh, thank you. Uh, so Alberto, yes, uh, yeah, before you end, I'd also like to say, like, starting as a student, always have a sketchbook and a pen with you, even if you don't have your laptop, because no matter where you go, you'll just find like inspiration just hits you anywhere, and you need something to like transfer that to. <laughs> so, yeah. Good luck. <laughs> That's a fantastic suggestion, Shreya. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, I would recommend Molston, Moleskin notebooks. Um, I just, you know, I, I usually buy one and I write all my notes in it, whether it's uh, my agenda or a schedule or observations from courses or things I have to do. And then once I'm done, I just make another one. And now I have this sort of collection of Moleskins and it helps me sort of keep track of everything. So uh, thank you for that suggestion, Shreya. Uh, may I ask, are we able to tour both campus during July and August? Um, I believe so. Is that correct, Sarah and Alexa? Yeah, reach out to us and then also keep an eye out for any events coming up. I know that Alexa has a lot of awesome things planned. So just stay tuned. And if you have any questions before any of those events happen, definitely email us and we can set up something. Um, we have done tours for people just one-on-one. -on -one, so if that's something that you're interested in, definitely just check in with us. Um, be on the eye, keep an eye out for group tours as well. Um, it's a good way to also meet any of your incoming uh, cohort and peers and just connect that way while you're checking out our cool campuses so and Heidi is asking if there are any campus tours happening soon yes so you can um I'm just going to try to find the link here but uh U of C offers uh campus tours and so that you can see the whole campus usually that's just the the northwest main campus um but uh kind of following that tour, you can also connect with us and then we can give you a specialized sample tour as well at the same time. Uh, so let's uh, coordinate that. Thanks, Sarah. She put the link in the chat, um, but we'd be very happy for that. And then, yeah, look for those Design Matters lectures uh, happening at uh, uh, the C City Building Design Lab, because um, that's a great way to see the downtown facilities as well. Fantastic. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I also want to take uh, thank Connie, Sahil, uh, Tom, and Shreya for, for joining us. Thank you again for, for sharing your perspectives. Sarah and Alexa, it's always a pleasure to have you here. And again, if you have any other questions, please reach out to us at bbci at sapple.ucagri.ca. And uh, I think we're having an in-person event later this uh, afternoon. So uh, if some of you are joining for that, then we look forward to seeing you there. All right. Thank you, everyone.